I'm going to give you 10 of my best tips to bring down your blood sugar naturally. These tips are easy, they're safe, and they work whether you have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or pre-diabetes. Okay, so I'm sure that you already know that if you want to be healthy, you shouldn't eat a lot of sugar. And if you have high blood sugar, you shouldn't be eating any sugar at all. And by sugar, I'm talking about the white table sugar that you put in your tea or your coffee. And people might tell you to use some all natural alternatives to regular sugar, like date sugar. Date sugar is sugar. Coconut sugar is still sugar. And what about honey? After all, it's all natural and it's made by bees. That doesn't matter. Honey is going to raise your blood sugar, just like regular sugar. There are some natural sugar alternatives that are even worse than regular sugar. One example is agave nectar. Agave nectar doesn't raise your blood sugar immediately, but if you eat enough of it, eventually it goes to your liver and it's turned into fat. Over time, your liver becomes filled with fat and this makes your pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes even worse. And all the artificial sweeteners like the kind you have in Diet Coke and all these other sugar-free drinks, try as much as possible to avoid them as well. So some better alternatives for sugar include monk fruit, stevia and allulose. So that was tip number 10 to bring down your blood sugar naturally. Be careful with both artificial and natural sugar alternatives. And closely related to sugar, believe it or not, is alcohol. And what's the connection between alcohol and sugar? One word, your liver. That's two words, but it's okay. When you drink a lot of alcohol, your liver takes this alcohol and turns it into what? You guessed it, fat. Eventually, your liver becomes filled with fat and the liver that's full of fat can't work the way that it's supposed to. And if you have pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, you're already having problems with your liver. So drinking alcohol just makes everything worse and your blood sugar will go up. So that's tip number nine to bring down your blood sugar naturally. Don't drink alcohol. So if you have high blood sugar, you should definitely be avoiding fruit juice, even when it's freshly squeezed, because all the fiber has been removed from it. But what about the all natural fruit smoothie that you whip up in your blender at home? During my online consultations, I get a lot of, doc, I drink a fruit smoothie every single morning. And some people even have two. Okay, so a fruit smoothie still has all the natural vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. It still has the fiber. So it must be good for your blood sugar, right? Well, there's a problem with fruit smoothies. When you blend your fruit in your blender, you're breaking up the fiber in that fruit into tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. And usually what the fiber does is that it holds on to some of the sugar in that fruit so that all of it doesn't go into your blood. When you break up the fiber, then you're letting out this sugar. There's nothing holding onto it inside your gut. And this sugar goes into your blood and raises your blood sugar. And unless you're a cow, there's no way that your teeth could break down the fiber in your fruit the same way that a blender does. So that's tip number eight to lower your blood sugar naturally. When you're having fruit, eat it, don't drink it. The next tip is about salt and it's not what you think. I know you're waiting for me to tell you that you should stop eating salt, right? Well, not exactly. You can't live without salt. And when you don't have enough salt in your body, you get headaches, muscle cramps, nausea, vomiting, and weakness. And having too little salt in your body can actually make you more insulin resistant which will eventually raise your blood sugar. And incidentally, some of the medicine that you take for high blood pressure actually makes you lose salt in your urine. So that was tip number seven. Make sure that you're getting enough salt in your diet. But how are you going to do that? If you want free access to my private question and answer sessions and quick tips to help you lower your blood sugar, lower your blood pressure, 
and your cholesterol, join my email newsletter by clicking the link in the pinned comment. It is 100% free. Well, that leads us nicely to the next tip. So these foods that you buy at the supermarket that are packaged in colorful boxes, cartons and containers, the ones that have a list of ingredients so long and so complicated that you basically need a PhD to decode them. These foods are usually full of salt. And apart from the salt, there's the hidden sugars, there's the artificial colorings, the artificial flavorings, the emulsifiers, the thickeners, and the list goes on and on. And you can avoid all that salt and all the rubbish that they put in these processed foods by cooking at home. That way you can add just enough salt to your food to make it taste good. And then you also avoid all those other weird chemicals that they put in food to make it more addictive. And these food companies want you to believe that all these chemicals that they're putting into these foods, that they're safe. But you need to remember that they don't care about your health. They just want to make sure they make as much money from you as possible. So is cooking at home extra work? It is, believe me, I know. But is it worth it? A hundred percent, yes. So that was tip number six, to avoid eating lots of salt and sugar and other weird chemicals in your food, cook at home. Okay, so you finally decided to stop eating packaged food and cook your own at home. What exactly are you going to eat? I promise you, this is really, really simple. You don't need to count calories. You don't need to weigh your food. You don't need to take the tasty skin off your chicken. You don't have to drown your food in butter. You just take your plate and divide it into four equal parts. Two of those parts will be covered with vegetables. Things like green leaves, tomatoes, peppers, carrots, cucumbers, broccoli, cauliflower, etc., etc. But notice that these are mostly vegetables that grow above the ground. Incidentally, just because someone tells you that kale is a superfood doesn't mean you have to eat it. I promise you that in your own part of the world, wherever you live, there are lots of superfoods that grow there naturally. Just eat those. So our plate had four parts. We've covered two parts with vegetables. That leaves us with two. Now, one of these two remaining parts is going to be covered with some kind of protein. So this will probably be some kind of animal. So we're talking maybe beef or goat, venison, chicken, turkey, fish, and other seafood, eggs, any kind of protein that's easily available wherever you are. So that's the third part covered. So the remaining part is where you'd put your starchy food. So that would be things like rice, yam, potatoes, pasta, beans, plantain, and so on. So really what you've just done is taken the food that you're eating already and changed the way that you eat it. And that's tip number five, divide up your plate. So going back to our plates in the last tip, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, wow, that is a lot of protein, but really it's not. So your skin, your hair, your nails are protein, your muscles are protein. Protein is basically the glue that holds your body together. But as you get older, you lose more and more protein from your body. And not only that, when you eat, you absorb less of the protein in your food. And having enough protein so that you can build enough muscle is really important because your muscles use up more energy than any part of the body apart from the brain. So this is important to lower your blood sugar. So that was tip number four, eat more protein to build more muscle. This is one of the most important tips if you want to lower your blood sugar. This is the advice I give to everyone who works with me through my online consultations and the people who take this advice make more progress than those who don't. What's the advice? Make things easy for yourself. And what do I mean by that? 
first of all, don't try to do everything all at once, especially if you're just starting on your journey to lower your blood sugar. Make one change at a time. Pick the one that's easiest for you to get started with. And once you're comfortable with that, then you can add on something else. And then you can't say that you want to stop eating sugar when you have cookies and donuts and cakes stashed in your house. Just don't buy them. Or you might want to stop drinking alcohol, but you keep going out to bars and pubs with people who are heavy drinkers. Forget about willpower. It's highly overrated. Your environment, your office environment, your home environment, the people that you hang out with and spend time with at home or when you're relaxing or at the office, these are either going to make it easier for you to do what you need to do to lower your blood sugar, or they're going to make your life much more difficult. So that's tip number three, make things easy for yourself. This next tip is important for different reasons. If you're taking drugs to lower your blood sugar, the dosage of that medicine, the amount that your doctor prescribed for you, is based on what your blood sugar was at the time that he or she saw you. And if you do even a few of the things I've talked about so far in this video, you'll find that your blood sugar will actually come down. So that means that the dosage of drugs that you're taking right now, the amount of medicine is too much for the new lower blood sugar that you have now. And so you might start experiencing signs of very low blood sugar. These might include weakness, dizziness, heavy sweating, and you might even collapse if the blood sugar drops low enough. So it would be a good idea to check your blood sugar more often. I can't tell you how many people I've consulted with who have insisted that wheat bread does not raise their blood sugar until they actually checked and found out that it does. And again, seeing as we're all so different, I might say to you, I eat this and it doesn't raise my blood sugar. And then you will eat the exact same thing, check your blood sugar and find out that lo and behold, it raises your blood sugar, even though it doesn't raise mine. When you know how different foods affect your blood sugar, then you can create a customized personal diet that works for you and not have to depend on random diets that people are promoting on the internet. So to be able to do all this, I will suggest that you get a glucose meter. And I know that not everyone can afford one and the strips are horribly expensive. But that was tip number two. Get a glucose meter if you can. This next tip is one of the most important on this list. I can't count the number of times I've heard, oh, my doctor said I should eat three meals and three snacks every single day. What happens when you do that? When you eat, your blood sugar goes up. When it starts coming down, before it has a chance to come all the way down to where it was before, you eat again, and then you eat again, and you eat again. And you find that by the time you go to bed, your blood sugar is so high. If you really want to bring down your blood sugar, stop eating all the time. Eat for part of the day, and for the rest of the day, don't eat. That is intermittent fasting. But how long should you fast? Can you take your medicine while you're fasting? Click on this next video to find out more.